The 10th Assembly has officially come on board after a nail-biting election of its principal officers. I'm Linda Akibe and you're welcome to the gavel. On Tuesday, June 13th, senators-elect elected Senator Godswill Akpabu as a Senate President for the 10th Senate and Senator Jubrim Barao as Deputy Senate President. In the House of Representatives, Honorable Abbas Tajuddin was elected Speaker of the 10th House of Representatives, while Honorable Benjamin Kalu emerged as Deputy Speaker. Let's take a look at how all this transpired in the National Assembly. It's D-Day in the National Assembly. The 10th Assembly is about to be inaugurated and a new leadership elected. There's been high-level politicking in the last few months after the general elections. Lawmakers-elect who are interested in the positions of Senate and Deputy Senate President as well as Speaker and Deputy Speaker of the House of Representatives have been lobbying their colleagues for their votes for the positions. As early as 7 a.m., Senators-elect were already seated in the chambers. It's a surprise because the inauguration was billed to begin at 10 a.m. on Tuesday, June the 13th. However, Channel Television lent that the time was brought forward to 8 a.m. and no explanation was given for the change in time. This change in time, in addition to the heavy security presence, made it difficult for journalists and staff to gain access to the assembly. And now call the Clark Senate to, call, to make the roll call. Regardless of these difficulties, at a few minutes past 8 a.m., the clerk of the National Assembly begins proceedings. First, a roll call for senators-elect present, and then a call for nominations of candidates for the position of the President of the Senate. The nomination of Senator Abdulaziz Yari by Senator Ishaku Abo draws this reaction. <laughs> Some senators claim that Senator Yari is not a ranking member of the Red Chamber. The clerk, however, waves their protest aside and calls for voting for the position of President of the Senate. We'll start with Abia states. The senators-elect are called on on a state-by-state -state basis to cast their vote, followed by sorting, then counting and declaration of results. Abu Bakr Abdulaziz Yari, Ibrahim Lamido. However, Midway into the counting, supporters of Senator Akpabio went into a frenzy with some trooping to his seat to congratulate him before the results were officially announced by the clerk. Total number of votes cast 109. Absent, nil. Abstain, nil. Abdul Aziz Yari scored 46 votes. Goldswill Apabio scored 63 votes. <laughs> Therefore, Senator elect Goldswill Apabio, who has received the highest number of votes, is hereby declared and returned President of the Senate. A swearing-in ceremony follows and then attention was turned to the position of Deputy President of the Senate, where Senator Jibrin Barao was elected unopposed. To the best of my ability, faithfully, faithfully, in accordance with the Constitution of the Federal Republic of in Nigeria. In accordance with the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. The Senate President gives his inaugural speech. I want to assure Mr. President that no matter what name the Senate is called, we are here to do national duties. This Senate is about Nigeria and Nigerians. And so long as the policies that come to these chambers concern the empowerment and upliftment of Nigerians, we shall dwell and deliberate and then have robust debate on them with public hearings. We will work closely with the executive arm of government whilst maintaining the normal independence of the legislature. Other members were also sworn in as senators and members of the 10th National Assembly. In the House of Representatives, the chamber is filled with legislators elect. Member elect Namchi Paul Sondi. Present. Member, member elect Atu Chimaobi Sam. Present. I rise to present to you. After the roll call, nominations begin for the position of the speaker. The first to be nominated is Mr. Abbas Tajuddin, who accepts the nomination. Right Honorable uh, Members, the CNA, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, 
I rise to humbly accept the nomination as a also nominated are immediate past Deputy Speaker Idris Wase and Aminu Jaji, who both accept their nominations. It's time to vote, and every member rises to do so via voice vote. I vote for a fellow Sokoto alumnus, TJ Abbas. This is the first time this method of voting will be adopted since 1999. Amongst the voters is the Speaker of the Ninth House of Representatives who is expected to take up his appointment as the Chief of Staff to President Tinubu. I vote for Dr. Tajuddin Abbas. A total of 359 members elect participated and when it was over, the clerk declares the results. Member-elect Tajuddin Abbas, having scored the highest number of votes, is hereby declared the winner and the return elected as the Speaker of the House of Representatives. Honorable Abbas Tajuddin, who is a third-timer, is led to the speaker's seat by his supporters and the clerk administers the oath. Hi, Abbas Tajuddin. Uh, do solemnly affirm, do solemnly affirm that, I will be faithful, that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance and here can bear true allegiance to the Federal Republic of Nigeria. To the Federal Republic of Nigeria. So help me God. So help me God. <laughs> With that done, the clerk then calls for nominations for the position of Deputy Speaker and Jimmy Benson from Lagos nominate Honorable Benjamin Kalu, who accepts his nomination. Mr. Speaker, Honorable colleagues, I'm from Abia State and I rise to accept the nomination ably presented by Honorable Jimmy Benson and ably seconded by Honorable Khadija. I so accept. He is, however, returned on a post as no other nominations were made. He is led by his supporters to take the oath of office. I, Benjamin Okizie Carlo, do solemnly affirm, do solemnly affirm that I will be faithful that I will be fed for in accordance with the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. And the law. And the law. In his address, the new speaker assures Nigerians that the House will work for the progress of the country. It's all about us coming together as a united house to serve the Nigerian people diligently. It is about honoring the trust that has been placed on us and working tirelessly to deliver on our promises of good governance and effective representation. Honorable colleagues, under my watch, the 10th hour shall sustain and even surpass the gains of the 9th Assembly. That's my prayer. We shall carry out the task before us jointly. We shall introduce reforms and innovations for the benefit of Nigerians. I solemnly swear. After taking his oath of office, the Speaker administers the oath of office to the 359 elected members of the House of Representatives in the 10th National Assembly. It's been weeks of lobbying, horse trading, nocturnal meetings, and finally, the much anticipated elections for the positions of the topmost principal officers in the Senate and House of Representatives have been concluded. It was a nerve-wracking race. The tension in both chambers on Tuesday, June 13th, was palpable. But in the end, winners emerged in both chambers. In the aftermath of the elections, one of the major contestants for the position of Senate President, Senator Abdulaziz Yari, says he feels betrayed at the outcome of the election. However, he has pledged to work with the new leadership of the National Assembly. He made the remark during an interview with journalists in Abuja. We thought that we are going to get a poll out of our PPC, which will have a comfortable 61 to win the election. But it's become the reverse, which is only God knows what happened. So that one I could be betrayed, 
But life continues, and it's a cycle. As a Muslim, I believe in faith. God had decided who would be the president of the Senate Tent Assembly, and uh, I have no reason not to accept what God had decided for us. I gave the Senate president assurance that we are going to work together as a team to protect that institution that we are today. And also, I had a lunch discussion with my people. 46 of us, but unfortunately, our 49 are feared. So we are uh, wondering from where three came from. The elections for the leadership positions in both chambers are over, and it's time to face legislative business. Some lawmakers disclose areas which they intend to focus on. The challenges we have about security, which is, as I usually opine, closely related to unemployment, we must begin to patronize ourselves as Nigerians in all ramifications. On security, issues on infrastructure, issues on education, issues on youth empowerment, women inclusiveness. Based on what President have said about the minimum wage for the civil servant, we as a legislature will make sure at any moment that the law come up, we're able to make it and that law should be implemented to make sure that the civil servant of each of these country are well paid. Yes, portfolios ought to be attached to the nominees before bringing them to the National Assembly so that the representatives will ask them based on what they want to be given to. If he attaches the portfolios to the individuals, I don't think there's anything wrong in that because the, the, the nomination starts from your intention. For you to nominate somebody, you must know that the capability, the ability of the person and where you need the person to work with you, to help you. So you have the problem you want that person to solve. One of the persistent criticisms that trailed the entirety of the Ninth Assembly was that federal lawmakers failed to assert their independence from the presidency, particularly in the area of scrutinizing loan requests. But some of the senators said this will not happen in the 10th Assembly. This Senate has 59 members from the ruling party and then uh, 50 members from the uh, parties in opposition. I don't know whether you call it but in the minority, not opposition, we're not opposing anybody. So uh, it goes to show that nothing will go through here uh, and, uh, in a number stamp manner. You cannot do it here. But everybody here will be patriotic enough to support policies of government, programs of government that will uh, um, improve the living standards of the Nigerian people. We have heard from the Senate President that he will maintain the independence of the uh, Senate, and uh, I believe that he will do so. You know, but what matters is that those things that need to be done for Nigerians are done seamlessly. The business of lawmaking for the 10th National Assembly begins now, as it prepares to either follow in the path of the 9th Assembly or chart its own course. You're welcome back to the gavel. Nigeria's Fourth Republic began on May 29, 1999. Now, since then, the country has had an interrupted transfer of power from one administration to the next. In these reports, we look at the leadership of the Senate and House of Representatives from the Fourth Assembly in 1999 till the Ninth Assembly, which ended in 2023. A new dawn beckoned at the beginning of Nigeria's Fourth Republic on May 29, 1999. After the elections which produced President Ulusegu Obasanjo and his vice, Mr. Tiku Abubakar, on the platform of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, the eyes of a nation turned to the National Assembly, which is the symbol of democracy in Nigeria. Evan Zenwerem was elected to the Senate in 1999 on the platform of the PDP to represent Imo East Senatorial Zone, he became the first Senate president after winning his closest rival, Senator Chuba Okadibu, to clinch the ticket on June 3, 1999. However, it was not long before allegations of name falsification hit Senator Evan Zewerem. He was removed as Senate president on November 18, 1999, over the controversy surrounding his name after a short-lived tenure. Senator Chuba Okadibo from the PDP, representing Anambra North, emerged as Senate President after Senator Enwerem was removed. 
Senator Haruna Abubakar continued as Deputy Senate President. All was going well for Senator Kadibo until allegations of financial impropriety were leveled against him. He was dramatically removed as Senate President on August 8, 2000. Senator Pius Anim, representing Eboin South from the PDP, was subsequently voted by his colleagues as President of the Senate on August 8, 2000, and he was in office until the end of the Fourth Assembly. Nigeria's fifth general election since the return to democracy in 1999 saw the emergence of another political party at the helms of affairs. The All Progressives Congress APC had defeated the PDP, which had been in power since 1999. However, the party's attempt to install a preferred leadership for the National Assembly failed, as Senator Bukola Saraki, representing Kwaran Central, was elected unopposed as Senate President on June 9, 2015, through an alliance comprising PDP and some APC senators. The APC wasn't pleased with the outcome, insisting that Senator Saraki was not the choice of the party. This set the tone for the relationship between the 8th Assembly and the Presidency, and the acrimony spanned the entire lifespan of the Assembly. Senator Saraki spent a considerable time as a Senate president facing allegations of corruption and false declaration of assets. He was acquitted by the Supreme Court in June 2018. Despite the turbulent relationship with the executive, the Saraki Akwaramado leadership completed the duration of the 8th Senate. President Muhammad Buhari was re-elected for a second term in 2019 and the party was more circumspect in approaching the National Assembly leadership issue. Ahead of the inauguration of the 10th Assembly, the battle for the leadership positions of the National Assembly has been fierce. The APC has picked Senator Godswill Apabio, representing Akwaibom Northwest as Senate President, while Senator Jubril Barao representing Kano North as Deputy Senate President. However, there are some major contenders for these positions, namely Senators Oji Kalu, Abdulaziz Yari and Sani Musa. Regardless of who emerges as Senate and Deputy Senate President, Nigerians will be looking forward to a 10th Assembly which will prioritize national interest and find solutions to the challenging economic and security problems of the country. Of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. So help me God. So help me God. When Nigeria transitioned from military to civilian rule in 1999, the People's Democratic Party merged as a ruling party and had the majority of lawmakers in the House of Representatives. The office of the Speaker was zoned to the Northwest, and a young lawmaker from Kano State, aged 29 at the time, emerged as Speaker of the House of Representatives. Mr. Chibudom Wuche from River State was elected as his deputy. Mr. Buhari would later resign on the 23rd of July 1999, after 55 days in office, over allegations of certificate forgery, for which he was later convicted. Further investigations revealed that Buhari was born in 1970 and not 1963 as he had claimed. Right Honorable Gali Umaranaba, also from Kano State, Northwest Nigeria, was then elected Speaker against the support of then-President Olushagun Obasanjo. A tumultuous relationship ensued, and the House in August 2002 gave then-President Olushagun Obasanjo an ultimatum to either resign in two weeks or face impeachment over allegations of corruption, incompetence, breach of the Constitution, and inability to steer the ship of the state. And while the presidency sought to replace Gali Naba, he served out his term as Speaker of the Fourth House of Representatives, even though he was eventually suspended from the PDP and subsequently lost re-election into the House in 2003. He was succeeded by Aminu Masari from Katsina State, Northwest Nigeria, under the platform of the People's Democratic Party still. And unlike Naba, Masari's tenure was laced with a good legislature-executive relationship. Mr. Austin Opara from River State, South-South Nigeria, was his deputy. In 2007, Mrs. Patricia Ete from Ocean State, Southwest Nigeria, on the platform of the PDP, emerged as Speaker of the Sixth House of Representatives and made history as the first and only female Speaker the country has ever had. Her tenure was, however, short-lived as she was accused of spending over 628 million naira on renovation of her official residence and that of her deputy, Mr. Babangida Nguruji, from Taraba State. She was also alleged to have purchased 12 official cars for the house without due approval. After almost five months as speaker, amid pressure, Patricia Ete resigned her position and Tengu Tegba 
was made interim speaker until another round of elections on the 1st of November 2007, which produced 37-year-old Dimeji Bankoli from Ogun State, southwest Nigeria. Not long after his emergence as speaker, Mr. Bankoli faced a share of controversy as he was accused of skipping the compulsory National Youth Service Program. He, however, completed his tenure in 2011. Mr. Usman Nafada was elected as his deputy. Aminu Tambuol, a member of the PDP from Sokoto State, Northwest Nigeria, became the Speaker of the 7th House of Representatives in 2011. His emergence was said to have been in breach of the PDP zoning arrangement at the time, which had endorsed Mulikata Konde from Southwest Nigeria. In 2014, Tambuol ditched the PDP and joined the newly formed All Progressives Congress APC. Emeka Ehedioha, his deputy at the time, stayed with the PDP. Following the defection of Mr. Tambowal, amid rumors of his impeachment, security agencies barricaded the National Assembly in 2014, preventing lawmakers from gaining access into the Assembly complex. In 2015, the new opposition APC defeated the ruling PDP at the presidential election and also produced the majority of the lawmakers in the 8th National Assembly. Consequently, Yakubu Dogara, a member of the APC from Bauchi State, Northeast Nigeria, emerged as speaker albeit against the preference of his party, after he connived with members of the opposition PDP. Mr. Lassun Yusuf from Oshun State was his deputy. Dogara's tenure was filled with rancor with the executive, culminating in his defection to the People's Democratic Party officially in January 2019, ahead of the elections. Before his official declaration in 2019, Yakubu Dogara was rumored to have purchased the House of Representatives form from the People's Democratic Party in 2018, after falling out of favor with the APC leadership and the president at the time, Muhammadu Buhari. Right Honorable Femi Bajabiamila from Lagos State, Southwest Nigeria, who was preferred by his party, the APC, in 2015, would eventually become speaker in 2019. Mr. Idris Wase emerged as deputy speaker. Bajabiamila's emergence was heralded by concerns of a lack of independence of the legislature, and the Ninth Assembly was termed a rubber stamp because of the influence of the executive and the emergence of its leadership and the consistency in the approvals to just about every request made by the immediate past president Muhammad Buhari. Since 1999, there have been eight speakers in the six national assemblies, two of them short-lived due to allegations of fraud and forgery and one interim speaker. Only four speakers have done full terms. There have been four speakers from the Northwest, three from the Southwest, and one from the Northeast. This is where we call it a day on this week's edition of The Gavel. If you have any views on any of the issues discussed, please email us on thegavel at channelstv.com. Thank you for staying with us and see you again next week.